the AUR is an incredibly useful resource for anything from a patched version of OBS to a random file manager that has three styles on GitHub and even printer drivers that basically nobody else in the world needs. And sure, it certainly does act as a crutch for the Arch maintainers for packages that probably should be in the core repos, but we are much better off with the AUR than without it. And most of the packages and the way they work are pretty sensible and pretty straightforward. Things like LFBIN, for example, are just moving a binary into the place it should be in. Or you have things like DMenu Git, where it's a bit more complex, it's handling some make settings, it's copying around some config files, but still ultimately just a pretty straightforward install script. Then there are things like OBS Studio Git, where you're handling things like submodules and plugins, but still ultimately just compiling code and then installing it. But not everything is like this. While there are plenty of weird projects packaged out there, what I want to focus on is the weirdest way that something is actually packaged. And I think that title has to go to Deezer. So if you don't know, Deezer is a proprietary music streaming platform like things like Spotify, for example. The difference is that it handles things like Hi-Fi Audio, offering Flax and 360 Audio and things like that. I don't personally use it, I couldn't say if it's worth it, but it certainly does have its fans. Now, first important part, Deezer is an Electron application. Now, I'll be saying, well, what's so weird about that? Electron works just fine on Linux. Well, like Streamlabs OBS and like a lot of applications out there, even though they are using Electron, they do not have a Linux version available. And in Deezer's case, it has never had a Linux version. Right now, you need either Windows 7 or later or Mac OS 10.13 or later if you want to use the desktop version. And in this case, we're not going to be doing some trickery by running the Android application or anything like that. We want to be using the desktop version. So this right here is the Deezer package on the AUR. And from its, you know, package page, it looks like a pretty regular package. It's got a description, it's got all the correct metadata in there, it's got its dependencies and everything else you'd expect. The only thing kind of out of the ordinary is that it has 22 pages of comments, but that just goes to show that a lot of things are going wrong with this and a lot of people are looking into it. So let's have a look at the package build then. The package build is basically the build script, the install script, the thing that actually, you know, installs this onto your system and makes this into a package. When you're installing from the AUR, you should always be at least briefly looking over these. So nothing out of the ordinary in the first 12 lines. It's customary to have the maintainer and the contributors listed at the top. And then these lines here are basically just your metadata, the things that fill in the information on this page right here. Where it gets interesting is with the source. You've got a bunch of probably important patches here, but most importantly is the first line of the source. This line right here. If we go and take this link, and then fill in that value at the end. So this is the package version, which is this value right here. This is going to be a download link, a download link for downloading the exe. We are downloading and installing an exe file on Linux. Now, all this thing on the left-hand side of the double column is doing is just renaming that file into a sensible, consistent format but we are not going to be running it through Wine. That has been done plenty of times before, and that's pretty boring. Now, here's the thing about EXE. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of how the format actually functions, but the most important thing is it's not this weird arcane Windows binary format. It's a well-documented format, and it's a well-documented archival format. So tools like 7-Zip can actually extract it. And that is the first step being done by the package build. So this package build is broken down into two main functions. We have the prepare function and also the package function. The prepare function is generally used for getting the application into a state where it can actually be packaged. First thing being done is extracting the app from the installer. Let's go and run these commands and see what actually happens. First thing though we're going to do is run a slightly different command. 7z x and then on that file right here. 
this is going to dump out a bunch of files. So we have the plugins there, and then inside of this, we have the app-32.7z and a bunch of these DLLs. Also, this extra uninstall exe that I don't really care about. Most important thing here is the app-32.7z. All of the rest is garbage Windows data so that the installer can actually function. None of this is relevant to the application itself. Let's go and get rid of all of that junk and then run the actual command. And because we only care about that 7z file, why bother extracting anything else? Now, inside of this 7z file is the application itself. So we need to go and extract that and then drag the application out. That takes a little bit longer because there is, you know, a bit more data to deal with. But once again, most of this is kind of junk. We don't need any of these pack files or bin files or DLLs. We don't even need the Deezer.exe. What we actually need is inside of the resources directory, there's going to be a file called app.asa. And what we're going to be doing is extracting that file. So what is an ASAR file? Well, an ASAR file, simply put, is an Electron Archive. Basically, the bundle that an Electron application needs to be in so that Electron can actually go and launch the application. So let's go and extract it and then see what we get. So inside of that archive, there was an app folder. Inside of this folder, we have the build folder and you might notice something, a bunch of JavaScript files. What we have done here is we have unpackaged the Electron application and now we can go and modify it to our heart's content. We can modify anything about the application. It is going to be formatted in this minified version, but you can change this and you can do whatever you want to it. In case you are wondering, this is how it looks unminified. It's not obfuscated or anything like that. It's just regular JavaScript. And just because Electron is a cross-platform toolkit, that doesn't mean it's automatically going to address every single problem on every single operating system. There are some issues that need to be addressed specifically for Linux because the application is not being developed and tested with Linux in mind. So to deal with that, some patches are going to be applied. For example, if you include the kernel version in the user agent string, which is something Electron would normally do, the Deezer servers don't know what to do with that. So to deal with that, it just returns it as 0.0.0 .0 and it just doesn't care anymore. Previously, the application was running in development mode. This led to a lot of logging, a lot of lagging, and um, breaking the Deezer TOS because in development mode, it would log the URLs for the MP3 files and um, yeah, they had no DRM on them and also things like making your system tray work properly, and less important things like that. And then once all of the patches have been applied, basically just repackage it back up as an Electron Archive, and then you're pretty much good to go. Now for anyone who might be curious, every Electron application works in this manner. Some of them might be obfuscated, but anything out there, you can go and unpackage it. I'm not saying that you should, it's probably against a lot of services TOS, but it is a thing that is possible. From here, the packaging stage, the actual installation stage is pretty straightforward. So we go and make all of the folders we need and then pretty much just put things where they need to go. So put the app.asar into slash user slash share slash Deezer. And then for the application icons, the Windows icons are going to do perfectly fine. Just put them to where they need to be on Linux, and you're good. We have a desktop entry, basically, so if you have a graphical app launcher, you can click on the icon, and then it will launch the application. And then finally, moving a Deezer binary into slash user slash bin. But we haven't seen a Deezer binary so far. It's not actually a Deezer binary. What it actually is, is a launch script. Basically, just a one-line shell script that says, hey, Go and open up Deezer with Electron 13, and yeah, just do that. Now, Electron 13 is kind of interesting. This is not the main Electron package available on Arch. The core repo package is Electron 20. But the thing about Electron applications is most of them do not use anything remotely close to the latest version of Electron. A lot of applications deal with this by bundling Electron with the application. 
but because of the way we are handling this package, that's not really something that can be done. What we actually need to do is install specifically Electron 13 from the AUR, but Deezer also isn't made with Electron 13. It is built against Electron 12. However, due to the way it's designed, Electron 13 isn't going to include any breaking changes. But breaking changes do start to happen at some point with Electron 14. So the maintainer of the package has this to say about this. Unfortunately not, referring to, hey, could you update it to Electron 14 at least. Deezer is distributed with Electron V12. To fix the breaking changes with Electron 14, Electron slash remote, it would require to include a full Electron install in this package, similar to installing a binary package, but even more against how Arch does things. So pretty much it's going to be Electron 13, until the developer decides they want to change it. There's no telling how long it's going to happen, and there's no telling how many versions they actually jump by. But this is pretty much what the package has been dealing with since it was first created all the way back in 2018. All the way back on Electron 3.0.10. And since then, the package has changed a bit, but it's still the same fundamental concept. And in the end, I think projects like this are just really cool. I don't use Deezer myself, but if you use it, and especially if you use it on Arch, and you didn't know how the package actually worked, and you want to get involved, I highly recommend if a problem comes up, you go and help out the developer and see what can actually be done. I think projects like this are kind of the epitome of what makes Linux cool. On Windows, most people accept that an application doesn't work and move on with their day. On Linux, Let's just make it work. Let's go and extract some archives and see what can be done. This is the strangest that I've been told about, but if you know about something weirder than this, please do let me know. So that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and like pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.